<laughs> you might want to work with um, some tiger's eye crystal. Oh my or... god, my boyfriend gave me one yesterday. <laughs> oh my god, that was weird. <laughs> Welcome back to Gin and Talk. Welcome back. Such a good episode today. Guys, we have a great episode for you today. We just got done recording with Catherine, (sighs) which is readings by Catherine. She is a psychic. I'll never read the same. Yeah, she is a psychic (laughs) and medium. Um, And wow. 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 Absolutely incredible. I will say a little prereq. Uh. At the beginning of the episode, we were having some connection issues. So there's some parts that, you know, it might be a little dodgy. I'm going to do my best yeah, to edit everything together. Mid. Yeah, the audio is not the greatest at the beginning, yeah. but it should be fine. I'll do my editing magic and see what we could whip together. But yeah, we just got done recording with her for today's episode. It was absolutely incredible. It was the first time Lily ever got a psychic reading done before. Yeah, it gets the audio actually does get better towards the part where she does our yes when she readings. does our readings. It's good. Um, but it was so interesting. Holy shit! You guys are gonna be like blown away. Yeah, she was unbelievable. Yeah, the readings were super interesting, and then also the questions in general that we like asked her about, and we just like found out like so many interesting like details. Yeah, like, this is like you guys will hear it in the episode, but like tiny little spoiler. Uh, she can't read family members. Yeah, just like the certain little... Yeah, certain little things. And she's like, totally... I mean, I know there's probably a lot of people listening there like skeptical, but yeah. she is the real deal when it comes yeah. to sidekicks. Like, this is someone that Christina has seen before many mm-hmm. times. Like, she is the real deal. Um, I've seen a medium before and it was the real deal. Like, you just if you do your research, she talks about it as well. Yeah. But, you know, you might some of you might be skeptical listening to this yeah. episode, but uh, my reading was bonkers and it was only like 10 minutes long and i yeah. am a believer enough after that yeah so. exactly and she did uh she sometimes she does her readings uh sometimes just purely you know by like you know the energy and whatnot but then sometimes she uses like cards as like tools and whatnot but she did hours today just totally just no the tools rip. no like yeah just you were just boom. like okay go and then she just she was like okay lily boom and she like, summarized the last year of my life i was like oh okay why do you know that and yeah and, she was like, and this is what you're doing now and i was like no yeah that's true <laughs> it was really it was bizarre yeah no it was awesome so yeah you guys are in for a treat today but obviously let's kick it off toxic thing of the week uh terrible toxic yeah, things we of don't the week. really have we don't- a good one we I mean just like I don't even what is what well, have we been I guess, doing the last week I've been laying low I feel like I've just I was been like so working. busy last week working but like also my birthday's a week from today and I guess what this wasn't gonna be my toxic thing but it kind of is like the 10 days before my birthday like I decide like my birthday starts now yeah and then it goes As it should till like a few days after my birthday so like it is my birthday today thank you oh my god happy birthday I know right. And that's how I will be treating it, especially with my boyfriend. Like last night, he's like, you know, who's doing that? I'm like, well, you put the dishes away. It's my birthday. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. literally my birthday. We did a so. picnic for Lily's birthday last night at Central Park. Um, it was cutie, which patootie. was lovely. Made a lovely cheese board. Shout out uh, Tina. Yes, and uh, we got a milk bar cake that said "poo poo pee pee" on it. <laughs> no, you guys, just for Lily. I I I love milk bar so much. Like my favorite cake in the world. So I see it and I'm so excited. And then David opens the box and it says "poo poo pee pee" on it. Like yeah, and I put it in my Instagram story. I shouldn't have done that. But I'm getting all these DMs that are like, what? What? (laughs) And I'm like, I don't know. You know what? I literally was like, uh, you know, I said in the group chat at some point, I made a joke. And I was like, what if we put poo poo pee pee on the cake? LOL. And then I didn't think we were actually going to do it. And then David David sends a text. He goes, I wish you guys could see the face of the girl at Milk Bar when I told her I need her to write poo poo pee pee on a cake. I was like, oh, so we're actually. I just can't believe that David asked. This poor lady at Milk Bar to write poo poo pee pee on my cake. Can you write? I think she was like, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, like, what? Yeah. Can you write? Like, she was like, can you write? Or David said, could you write something in the cake? She said, yeah. What's like, what's the name of the person? David goes, no. No. Fuck that. <laughs> poo poo pee pee. Well, t- right, <laughs> me and David dressed up as babies for Halloween. And unfortunately, it has stuck a little bit too hard yeah so now now like if i don't want to do something i'm like i'm just a baby i can't 
I'm going to poo poo my diapy. Like, I don't know. Like, right, my roommate didn't want to talk to this guy anymore on Hinge. And she literally DM'd him saying, I'm going to poopy my diapy. Yeah. And he unmatched her. Iconic. <laughs> so, I don't know where that comes from. Oh, wait. I do have a toxic thing of the week. Speaking of Hinge and stuff, that literally just That's happened. happened. Guys, my toxic thing of the week. Originally, I was just going to, like, make some shit. Well, not make some shit up. I was going to be like, I spent, like, $300 at Trader Joe's yesterday, which is... Yeah, Lily's drinking the wonderful Trader Joe's coffee. Anyways, originally I was gonna just be like, oh, like I spent the hundred bucks at Trader Joe's because I don't really have so a toxic. Thing to make. toxic. Like, oh my god! No, I want to hear that you got fucked in Trader Joe's. Like, what do you? <laughs> he bet me over at the cash register and fucked me. Fuck yeah! Did you Fuck get a yeah. candle on the way out? Like, right. let's go, baby. And then he gave me their new eucalyptus candle, and I was on my way. <laughs> no, um, so what, what I was going to say though, what? I just we're so weird. I, I don't know. There's unwell. there's things happening. Um, yeah. no, actual toxic thing of the week now that I just remembered is um, I thought that I deleted Hinge like two two and a half months ago. Nope, discovered that literally a few minutes ago. Discovered I do indeed still have Hinge on my phone. And it's not paused. It's no, it is paused. So that's the thing. My hinge is on pause. But I guess when I deleted it, I didn't delete it fully from my phone. I just like clicked on the remove home screen thing <sighs> by accident. No. So I thought that I had a hinge Delete. deleted this entire time. But then all of a sudden I I get a notification from a hinge before. And it's like this guy that I matched with literally like two and a half, three months ago was like, hey, sorry, haven't been on the app. Like, what you up to? And I was like, why the fuck am I getting this? Yeah, like, and what? then I ended up looking it up. Turns out I still have Hinge. Oh, God. I was sitting with Workbait the other day and I got an email from Bumble and they were like, updating our terms of service. <laughs> and David goes, what? I was like, what? no, no, I swear. I don't know what that is. Like, I, mean, I looked up Bumble and I was like, I don't have it. I swear. Yeah, literally. Why like, are they doing just, us dirty? Like, it's just a look at my, like, I think all my things are like just. It wait, is embarrassing. Now it says, now it says sign in. Okay. Well, I didn't weird. log out. I feel like just so you know, if you have a dating Whatever. app, please turn the notifications off. Like there is nothing more embarrassing than a guy that has a bunch of hinge notifications on his fucking yeah. lock screen. Literally. Stop. This person liked you. This person liked you. This person liked you. Congratulations. Wait, you had your notifications on, actually. I did, so. but I'm a girl, so... Completely different. <laughs> actually. No, so different. Me and uh, me and Ryan one time, Lily's roommate, we were at a bar with Lily and David, and me and Ryan decided at the same time that we were going to do a boost on Hinge for, like, shits and gigs, <laughs> and just, like, see how many, like, likes we could just rack up. Oh, yeah. So we literally went ahead, paid whatever it was, six ninety nine to an embarrassing boost. Yeah. Like, do, like, do we Paying really need to for boost, a boost the Hinge profile? Hinge. Yeah. Do we really need to boost the Hinge profile? Well, did I tell you when me and David broke up for six minutes in February, January, whatever, that I got Hinge, which was a choice for sure. I probably should have done that, but whatever. <laughs> I got Hinge the day it happened, of course. And Big Jeans saw me and exposed me. Yeah. Big Jeans was on Hinge? Yeah. I wonder if he stood. No. Well, he told me he's not. No, I don't think he is anymore. But not matter anyways. We're not at that level. Matter. We're not dating. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're not together. Fine. He texts me. It's so weird. At like three in the morning last night, I get a text from him that says lighting. And that's it. That's the whole text. I text him back when I'm with Lily. Question mark. What? What? <laughs> and then he FaceTimes us as we're eating breakfast this morning. He's like, I woke up at 3 a.m. and there was lightning. So he just texted Christina. Just, Light, lightning. It, well, it said lighting. Yeah. It auto-corrected. But he's like, yeah, just lightning. But yeah, that man exposed my hinge i just get a text from work babe we hadn't talked in like a week because we were broken up and he just goes nice hinge profile actually it's really bad and it's not funny and you need to like fix it <laughs> i was like okay well you just like ruined my life Nice hinge profile psych yeah like. he was like it's actually really bad and like embarrassed cringe i was like first of all that's kind of fair it is horrible but second of all <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I, everybody knows I take pride in my Hinge profile. Oh my God, mine was so embarrassing. And you know what's funny is some of the suggestions that I gave you to use on your Hinge profile, <laughs> you ended I ended up, like the Trisha Paytas one. Well, it's funny because is on my Hinge, hinge profile. profile is so funny, but like we all know that I'm the funny one, but my Hinge profile wasn't funny. <laughs> Sorry, who? 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 <laughs> who? <laughs> who? <laughs> who? <laughs> who? <laughs> who? <laughs> who? 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 Who
did a USA and Canada tour. Oh, oh no. The tour. The Mind Your Business tour came up last night in the car. I go, she's international. <laughs> she did Canada. <laughs> she did Toronto. She had one Two Toronto time. show. <laughs> <laughs> one Any, Toronto show. Two years that? in a row. GNT. Get G- with it. Anyways, <laughs> like, help G and T. Uh, yeah. So okay, <laughs> getting into G and T. Um, okay. Do you know so- what David's hinge prompt was first and foremost. <laughs> what on on Workbay's um hinge profile, his it was two truths and a lie, and his was, I like Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell. I really love Taco Bell. <laughs> that is such a fucking cliche, though. <gasps> really? Okay, thank you. That made me feel better. So many he, people put, like, something of, like, that, I like... I like love, I really like, love. I like, I love... Yeah. Oh, no, he oh, so definitely stole that. Fuck you, Workbay. He made me feel like <laughs> shit for my Hinge profile. No, I am the like, ultimate I'm just judge here to be hot. Profile. Like... Like mine said, I won't shut up about the global impact of the two of Trisha Paytas in the 2009 "We Made You" Eminem music video. Now that is a quality prompt. That is quality. That's that's pretty great. Yes. And then I ended up putting on there too. I put a picture of me and Floki on there, and it was like the best way to ask me out is get permission from my dog first. That got a lot of replies. Um, oh I God. also had Men one and about women like are sluts for a dog. For a dog. Oh my God! If a guy has a dog in his profile, like you're just like you're like your point hotter. Have you seen the theory though that all hot girls have a cat? <laughs> no, but that it's would make going sense. really strong on TikTok right now. They're like, they dress really scary and they all have a cat. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, so th- true. Yeah. Scary, like hot. Scary. We went to my dad's show the other day, and apparently Lily said that some girl like came up to her and was like, "I think you're a goddess." <gasps> you guys, Barbie <laughs> in the flesh came up to me at the end of this concert and was like, "I just wanted to say that I've been looking at you. You are so gorgeous, goddess energy, like all this stuff." And she's going off, and then she goes, "And you and your friends are so adorable and happy and full of life." And I was like, "And you're a Barbie." Was and she you're- like our age or was she older? Yeah, she was like our age. Oh my god! Yeah, she was like a cute, like I don't know, like yeah, looking our age, maybe college or something. But I was like, uh-huh. <gasps> shock! Like, like that's the greatest compliment ever. Lately, Thank when girls you? have been commenting me, I've said thanks, Barbie. <laughs> yeah. So no, I love that. I think if somebody said to me that I have I Barbie think energy, the impact of that movie is real. So I've, real. No, genuinely, I've gotten more like random compliments from women. Like the other day, I was in uh, Washington Square Park, and this girl was walking towards me in Work Bay, and I turned to him and I go, "Oh my god, that girl is." gorgeous like she was just this cool looking pretty girl she walks right by me and goes you're so pretty and i love your ruffle socks and i go oh you're gorgeous yeah david was like what did i just witness i was um, we both just started like getting so wound up we were like oh my god barbie (laughs) i was leaving a store the other day in williamsburg and this girl had this really cute top on uh, i was passing in the street so i told her i was like oh my god i love your top she goes oh my god thank you so much i made it i go you made it she was like yeah and i was like oh my god you have talent i was like that thing is beautiful she was like barbie sewing barbie thank you barbie (laughs) taylor barbie (laughs) taylor barbie (laughs) like literally like yeah, but, so the, the Barbie effect is real. Anyway, so real, but so okay. on. G and T. Um Okay, so we're gonna talk about the Kai Sinat, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Riot, did you hear about this? Yeah, me and David's friend went and took pictures. <laughs> you guys went? No, no. Our friend went. Oh, your friend and went. We're talking oh to him about it, and we're t- we're like, yeah, did you hear about that riot today? And he goes, Yeah, I was there. And we were like, what? <laughs> Just showing us yeah. pictures. I was like, why so, did you go to that? No, literally. My brother was the one that first texted me about it and was like, oh my God. I had no idea what my brother was talking about. He texted me and he goes, did you get the PS, uh, PS5 or like whatever it was that he was giving away? Yeah. He goes, did you go get a PS5? And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And he's like, where is Union Square like in comparison to you? I was like, it's not, I don't, medium distance. Your family's so uh, like, funny. They live so close to New York City and they have no idea what's going on in no. the city. Where is Union Square? They don't know. They don't come enough, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, for those of you that don't know what's going on, Kai Sinat, um, he is a famous streamer. Um, honestly, he's arguably one of the most the most famous streamers like ever. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, he announced like last week that he was going to be doing a giveaway for a PS5 and a bunch of $100 gift cards for fans in New York City. And he said he was going to be doing the giveaway in Union Square around 4 p.m. By 3 p.m., that bitch was already <laughs> packed with people. It turned into a riot. No, literally. So 
the whole thing was held with no permits and things just became like really chaotic, like just super fucking quickly. Uh, people were spilling onto the streets and blocking cars. There were videos of people jumping on cars and banging cars. People were throwing rocks and setting off fireworks. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. unique. No, people were just climbing onto things. And then even Kai himself showed up and then left. And as he was leaving, people were literally climbing on top of his car as it was moving. Um, And he addressed it on his Instagram story. And he said, like, oh, I love my fans, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But he, that he also knew that things might get shut down quickly. Um, and apparently there were like statements ahead of time. I don't know if it was on his stream or like whatever, where he made comments saying that like things are going to get too wild and telling like fans we're going to go crazy and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that. So, so dangerous. Very dangerous. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> so a bunch of arrests were made. 65 people arrested. 30 of them were juveniles. So like yeah. underage kids. Um. There was this one video particularly, I don't you probably saw this. It went viral of like a police officer like banging someone's head like basically through a fucking taxi okay, yeah, window. Well, it was absolutely nuts. Um and also the 65-year-old food vendor uh also went viral because he got like all his shit like stolen from him and they were like hitting him and everything. It just made it made young generation look first of all just look so horrible. bad. Absolutely and, like, horrible. It made this you know social media like yeah he's a streamer but like it makes this like influencer kind of figure look really bad and like look like he's using his power in like such a yeah. bad way like everyone on the news like you know these boomers are like what are these kids doing yeah, they're using yeah. their platform but it's like oh uh, he's just making like yeah. the young generation look so bad which no. maybe they are <laughs> like, it's like literally you know what his fans are like rowdy, these like ra rowdy crazy year old fans boys. and stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's very like because it's like half of me is like um you know because honestly at the end of the day it's really about how his like it's not necessarily about him it's about like how his fans like handle things and want to do things but obviously mm -hmm. like it depends like apparently like i said he said things like we're gonna go crazy no his energy stuff, he's nuts but, I've I seen know, a lot I know of things about him. I know he's nuts, but also I'm like n obviously 99% sure. Like nobody would literally tell their fans. No, to no. Do that, I obviously you know? don't think he wanted that to happen. Yeah, of course. But at the same time, it's kind of like what Travis Scott did with Astro World. It's like you're creating this environment where like you might not want that to happen, but you're creating an environment where it could happen. Or it could happen. And yeah. it's like with these days, like people just get out of control when it comes to like big crowds and like yeah. riots and like. I don't know. It gets like this terrible energy comes about like these ma mm -hmm. big crowds. And I feel like creating those environments in the first place is kind of the problem. Like, yeah. Like, we just and it was just like that. that. It wasn't like with a like if he wanted to do that, obviously, ahead of time, like knowing how powerful and big he is, he yeah, should have like, gotten the permit. Yes. And notified. The permit NYPD would have been a game changer. Like, there could have been like a ton of cops yeah. there to like mediate it. Yeah. And, like, whatever. Like, exactly. But uh, anyways, he was charged with first degree rioting, yeah. a felony, inciting a riot and unlawful assembly. Yeah. I mean. So, yeah. I don't what know. What an idiot. Like. Yeah. So it's just like. Uh, like GNT fans meet us in Union Square. We yeah, rise at dawn. No, it's literally one of those situations where I'm like, I think he meant so well. Yeah. You know, obviously he wanted to get like give back to his fans <laughs> and everything, but just very meant <sighs> so well. Very poorly Picture executed. Picture Christina doing this like a bunch of like. 17 year old girls show up in like black and pink <laughs> me and lily yeah never mind nobody would nobody would rage with us be, you guys would just be like can we just have a gin and toxic condom please yeah like, like please give us the condom we got more condoms in with qr codes uh i did spend my entire afternoon before just sorting them out for lily uh it was a whole thing Give me your address maybe i'll just yeah. like randomly send you a condom okay wait, one more thing that i want to bring up for uh gnt though that i didn't write on here because i wrote this up like a few days ago uh did you see all the little tay stuff yeah going on <laughs> pressing what the fuck is going on <laughs> These are pressing I matters i guys. wish i wish i like actually like did like a full synopsis of it to write down basically for those of you that don't know or you do know or to refresh your memory little tay was like that little girl that went viral for just being like fucking like nuts and stuff like a few years back on social media and then like a bunch of shit happened where like her dad like told the mom that like she's got to stop and then there were like accusations of like the dad being abusive and then her and her brother kind of just like fell off the face of the earth for a bit 
few days ago. The whole thing was random. The whole thing was nuts. And then, so she's been like MIA for like years, whatever. I and then, about her. like a few days ago, yeah, everybody did. Fever dream. Yeah, a few days ago, uh, there was a post made to her Instagram saying that her and her brother died. And it, it, it was very sketchy, but then people like, started like calling her dad's like law office and the dad was like I can't confirm or deny anything and it was just all this stuff and people started getting like this weird feeling that it was a hoax and then it was confirmed that it was a hoax little Tay like came out and was like I am not dead like what the fuck like whatever uh personally like I said I don't know all of the details I I I think it was a a clout yeah probably like get the name out again which here's the thing I like Anybody that fakes a death for clout, you're the worst type of person. I actually can't think of like a worse thing. I obviously, I don't know. I mean, she's a fucking little girl. Like, I don't think that was her idea, but I think it was like the idea maybe of like the brother or the family or something. It's even creepier if it was one of her parents. Well, the dad doesn't like support anything that she does. It was the mom and the brother that were like putting her into like this limelight and whatever. So... Yeah, so I don't know, but the whole thing's wild. I want to read up more on it, but yeah, it was confirmed a hoax, and I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, definitely weird energy around yeah, that. Weird vibes. One more G and T thing. What? Nineteen eighty nine. Oh, Taylor's yes. version has been announced. Yes, <laughs> yes, it has. You guys should have seen me watching the live stream. Like it was, um, I was like, David, she's in a blue dress. She's in a blue dress. Oh, my God. The next set. Oh, my God. She's wearing another blue dress. Holy shit. Hannah's there. Holy shit. Hannah's there. And then she comes out in another blue dress. And then, boom, it's announced. I was freaking out. Yeah. And then also, apparently, you said, like, Hannah didn't speak to you for, like, 24 (laughs) hours because she was, like, trying to, like, process. Hannah and Iman, our best friends, were at the show that night. And then, like, Hannah texted me, like, during the show. Like, she sent me, like, a picture of the stage at one point. And then, like, I sent her, like, 57 text messages that night, not answering me. I'm like, okay, fair. Like, it's a long night. The whole next day, I'm like, hello, hello. Like, yeah. what's the update? Are you okay? Like, are you different now than you were before? Like, what's going on? <laughs> she's not answering me. And then, like, at midnight that night, she's like, hi. <laughs> I'm like, hey. <laughs> There's, like, a thousand text messages above this. And she's like, I'll never be the same. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, okay. So Bye, fair. Hannah. Like. Good so luck with that fair. journey. Right. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to get either Harry Styles, Lord, or Selena Gomez on the. Yeah. That's your Taylor Swift update of the week from Lily. Yeah, I'd expect another one next week. Right. Thank you. <laughs> every, every like week to two weeks. Well, now Taylor she's. Swift update her tour is like on break now. And I'm like, like the show ended and I was like, well, what, what do I do now? What do I do now? Like the next Can't surprise songs myself. aren't for like two months. Like, what am I supposed to do? So. Yeah. Well, we're just going to get right into it with Catherine. So uh, she is a virtual guest. So enjoy. Enjoy, Illy. All right, guys, we are joined today by one of New York's most highly rated and reviewed psychics in medium. Catherine, welcome to Gin and Toxic. Welcome to G&T. We are so excited to have you. Hi, girls. So excited to be here. Yeah. So basically, uh, so Catherine is my personal psychic. I discovered her scouring the internet like three or four years ago during COVID times. I was going through a lot of when stuff. When you were in the trenches. Yeah, when I was yeah. really, I was really down bad at the time. Uh, and I came across Catherine and, you know, I, when you're looking for a psychic, we're going to get into it in the episode too, but you know, you got to be careful who you're choosing, make sure there's no like phonies out there and whatnot. And uh, Catherine really spoke to me and her readings over the years have been incredibly accurate for what's going on through my life. And she's given me tons of spiritual guidance. And yeah, so we were like, how interesting and fun would it be to have her on the show? Answer some questions that, you know, our audience has always had about, you know, psychics, mediums, all that stuff. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll wrap it up with some readings. And yeah, so that's kind of the rundown of how we of how I met her. So yeah, so we're gonna basically just get yeah. to some questions. So all right. So first, when or you know, how, when and how did you discover that you were psychic? And do you remember like your first experience that it like clicked for you that you had 
this, you know, psychic gift? Yes, I do. Uh, well, first of all, my mother was a very powerful and well known psychic and healer. And growing up, I really kind of resented. Uh, and I, I, I thought it was like, weird and crazy. And I remember being young thinking I never want to do what my mother does, you know, uh, because she never really had like all the time to give us because her practice was so like, you know, demanding of her time. And I thought, you know, when I grew up, I want to be a veterinarian and I'm never going to, you know, do this. This is so weird. But then as I was, you know, young, I was probably eight or nine years old. I knew I can pick up on things, but I pushed it away. You know, I wanted to rebel and not, you know, embrace what my, uh, what my spirit was telling me. And then I was in a grocery store with my mother, I was probably around 11. And I remember feeling just this immense feeling of something telling me, you know, you have to tell this woman this message you had. And it's like, you know, sitting in line at a grocery store. And I said, you know, I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you this. And it was like, you know, really just detailed message. And you know, this woman was just so like crying, but so appreciative. And it gave her like such a validation. And I just remember at that moment thinking like, I get it. I know why my mother does it. It was such a satisfying feeling of like, you help someone with just a simple message. I remember just feeling like it just clicked. And I was so, I understood what it meant. And ever since then, I started really like embracing you know, my abilities and mastering it. And ever since then, it's like, whether I liked it or not, like, you know, whether I want it or not, oh, I could always pick up things if it was, you know, someone at school or a friend, and it just kind of, you know, really enhanced from there. Wow. So, so you were only I learned to really like master. Yeah. So you were only 11 when you went up to this woman in the grocery store. Did she think you were just like some like crazy child yeah. or something? <laughs> like, you know, like, but I love it. I'm sure. up to me and I'm she's sure. like, I have a message for you. I'd be like, yeah. oh my God, like, what? you know, <laughs> I'm sure she was a little, you know, freaked out. Um, but being that the message was so like, you know, detailed and, you know, it really resonated with her. She knew that it was something really genuine. And also, I mean, uh, my mom helped out as well. And she's like, listen, I'm sorry, but this never happened before. I am, you know, a, a psychic and a medium and this is her first time and I didn't want to hold her back. Um, but what she's feeling is, you know, a, a premonition or a message. And I hope that's okay. And she just thanked me. She hugged me. And that was like my first real genuine, you know, experience. And I just, I, even as a child, I just knew that this is what I'm, I'm meant to do. This is a calling. This is my purpose. From that moment on, I kind of made like a promise. I would always speak what I felt or I would always, you know, express whatever was coming through. Gotcha. OK, so. All right. So you said you wanted to be like before you were saying when you were a kid and whatnot, like you wanted to be like a veterinary and stuff. So, OK, so when you were did you decide at like 11, 12 years old, you were going to be a psychic or were you still like, I'm going to graduate high school and like go to college or something like when did you decide in that moment that that was what you were going to do or pretty much? I think that there's always a part of me that's very uh, nurturing. I'm a Virgo, so I'm very, very nurturing. Um, I love animals. So I feel like I was still a little bit, you know, torn. I know I wanted to still be in something where I was, you know, nurturing or taking care of, you know, something or someone. But I also knew that I had something that was deeper within. So I kind of struggled with it you know, a little bit, but, you know, early, early on, I always, you know, embraced, you know, this magic, this ability, you know what I mean? And it was from pretty much that moment on, I knew this needs to be incorporated with whoever I am or whatever I'm doing. Gotcha. That is so cool so and interesting. Cool. Yeah. That like you from a young age, I guess when you know, you just know. Can I ask at a, at a young age, did you first um, mm -hmm. like when you first were having those experiences, was it psychic experiences or was it more like medium reading experiences? Because I know you're capable of both. That is a good question. I was younger, believe it or not. I feel like I my medium ability was much more keen. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and you know, a lot of times people say that, you know, with kids and, you know, animals that they have is kind of like a deeper or like a sixth sense that's very natural. So I feel like, you know, when I was younger, my ability to connect to spirit um, or, you know, 
other spirits randomly, I think was a, a lot more, you know, often, you know, we're now uh, a medium, but I'm more a psychic. You know what I mean, and mediumship readings, you can't control. You know, I always say if the spirits are earthbound and they want to come through, then they will. But it's not always a guarantee. Gotcha. But when I was younger, I definitely can pick up more on spirits uh, when I was younger. That's true. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That is, yeah, so interesting. That was a really good question. Okay, so if if somebody has a feeling that they might be, you know, like psychic or intuitive, is there any sort of like test you could put on yourself to see if you actually are like when I mean, for you, I guess like it was more natural because like you said, you have like almost a family line of you mm-hmm. know other and whatnot was psychic. Um, but was there like anything you did or that somebody can do to like check and like validate that they actually are a psychic or a medium or, you know, anything of that sort? Yeah, I mean, I get that question a lot. I feel that there are some people that are way more highly intuitive than others, you know, and um, then there's a difference between being highly intuitive and, you know, psychic or almost psychic like, and there is a way, you know, some ways to test it. And then I know it sounds crazy, but you know, then there's some ways that you can. So Mm -hmm. There are some, you know, I come from a long line of very powerful, intuitive women, you know, that are uh, psychics and healers. Um, So it's different for me. Yes, naturally, I grew up in it. But, you know, those who have not grown grown up in it um, and they can just feel it, a great way to test it, I always say, is if you have a feeling, let's say you're with your friends, let's say, you know, you're at work or whatever the case may be, and you get a, you know, a feeling like, oh, something is going to happen or, oh, this person is not, you know, feeling well today, or I don't know why, but I just feel like, you know, uh, you know, uh, some type of action is going to take place. And then it actually happens. Really embrace that feeling and verbalize it. You know what I mean? And then test that theory. See if it's actually true. You know, I wouldn't go on a whim and like, you know, offend people like, oh my gosh, I actually feel like your boyfriend is doing this, this, and this. And just like, you know, it's like really <laughs> shocking, you know, <laughs> but start small, you know, uh, start small. Yeah. <laughs> start small and, you know, go, go with your feeling, go with your gut and really verbalize it. And then if you see it transpire and you actually see it happens, then and you really feel, then you could really work with your gift and your ability and try to, you know, enhance it by you know meditation by being connected to yourself and you know visions may come to you or feelings may come to you more and more yeah gotcha that's so interesting okay so actually this this next question i was just telling lily i'm like super intrigued to know the answer how many of your clients are men versus women and what are like the big differences that you see in the types of questions that they ask because you know i feel like in a you know, it probably stereotypically, like, I feel like women are probably asking more about like love and men are asking more about like, I don't know, finances and stuff. It's it- such a good question because you guys are going to be so shocked by uh, this oh, answer. And I get this okay. question quite a bit, but believe it or not. Yeah. Believe it or not. I would say that my clientele is so ha- just as much male as it is female. Wow. Okay. That's good. Believe it or not. And um, yeah, and they have actually not that much different questions. Maybe the narrative, maybe the way that they question things is different. Like, for instance, you know, women pay more attention to detail and where men are just very straightforward. You know, I am a love specialist and I do help a lot, you know, with my clients, like navigating and overcoming, you know, certain problems in love and relationships and whatnot. Their questions is more like, you know, straightforward. They don't, women do pay attention more to details and social media and all these things where my male, you know, my male clientele, they don't focus to, you know, things like that. They're just very, you know, straightforward, you know, kind of like, this is what it is. Um, and it's not just about their work and finance. It is a lot about, you know, love and relationships. I think that our society has created a major communication barrier. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, with social media, things get so misconstrued, you know, conducted or misconstrued. And I think that uh, it causes a lot of confusion. And I think that sometimes you need someone, you know, that could read a little bit deeper to bring some an- understanding or clarity. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, you know, very interesting, though. But yeah. I would say their questions are just the same just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more straightforward. 
Yeah, that would make sense, too, because obviously Mm -hmm. us as women, we like to we like to dive deep into like the little tiny little. Well, I I, in my head, I'm picturing guys being like, am I going to find my personal one? Yes or no. And then women are like, when am I going to find it? How am I going to find it? What does he look like? Like, (laughs) What's his family like? Yeah. All the deep dive. Okay, so tapping into, you know, talking about the. um you know, kind of when you do do a reading on somebody, specifically a psychic reading, how are you able, how do you tap into their energy in order to give them an accurate reading? Like, how does that work? Like, how are you able to just read their energy? <laughs> so for me, um, it's it's out of my control. I know that sounds crazy, but messages and visions and, you know, picking up on their vibration is going to ha- come to me whether I like it or not. But I always like to start the reading by telling my clients to come in with an open heart and an open mind. Because if you have just an open heart and an open mind, I could be able to tap into your energy and read whatever, you know, messages spirit wants to bring through, you know, Um, but it's not something that I can control where it's like things that I do that allow me to be able to do so it just comes to me like oh it's very second nature it's very natural for me i can sit with someone and instantly the two are not on their energy gotcha are you this is actually this isn't it's a bit distracting sometimes here, but i feel like yeah so is there kind of like you were saying like with the grocery store example before um is there like times where you're at dinner or something and like the person sitting at the table next to you like you just uncontrollably you tap into their energy and you're like i need to tell them this thing oh my god all the time and the thing that's so funny is um uh, my kids hate it the most it's but now they got used to it but when they were smaller it used to be so funny because like my mom like normal life you know going to pick up the kids from school or going to the grocery store or whatever and i'd be like oh my god i have to tell this person this oh there's so and they'd be like mom no not again. yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know you can like get it out you know i could really feel like this person is really struggling with this or this is something that i really need to you know uh help this person with and the kids my kids would always be like all right here you go now they just embrace it now they're just like all right there, mom. there she goes again all right just let her do her thing Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really funny. As you like, you know, obviously when you're younger, um, you think that everything that your parents do is like embarrassing, like because you're in this like yeah. angsty teenage yeah, phase. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, stop and blah, blah blah. But then as yeah. you get older, you just fully, you know, you fully embrace that. And I'm a perfect example of that. Like I said, when I was younger, I thought my family, my mom was, you know, I don't want to have it. But then as I got older, and I realized everything she said was right. And I, I looked at her with how did she do all of this and how people talk about you know what I mean? And so as a kid, I thought totally different. And now that my kids are, you know, I have, you know, one that's, you know, in his 20s, he understands it and he embraces it. Okay, so on the medium side, How are you able to actually like get in touch with someone's loved ones? I know you're saying a lot of it's naturally. And how do you like actually communicate with them? Are you literally sitting there and if they come forward, they come forward and you're hearing like, are you hearing their literal voice in your head? Are you getting pictures in your head? Like, how does how does all of that work? (laughs) So every every I always say like, you know, every psychic or medium or empath is different. You know, how they communicate, how they receive is different. But nobody is the same. So for me, um, I can't hear like a conversation like you and I. So I can't hear like exactly, you know, a conversation like, you know, you and I are talking. It, I won't say never, but it's rare. Um, but for me, I see more signs and symbols. Like if I see a certain color of a flower, I know it means forgiveness. If I'm seeing, you know, and sometimes I'll even feel like a sensation, like I'll feel like a certain pain here or something. And it lets me know like that person, you know, struggled with maybe uh, a back problem or a heaviness on the chest. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's a feeling, a symbol uh, or a sign that I'm seeing that I know and I could recognize what the meaning is, you know, and then that's just the way of the spirit validating, you know, this is me to their loved one and it's their way of coming through. Or sometimes they show me a symbol only that person knows their loved one that they would connect with, you know what I mean? And they'll be like, oh, no, I know oh, that's exactly, you know, my my sister. Or, no, that's exactly my, you know, mother. And it's something particularly that they would know to cure, you know what I mean? Gotcha. 
Yeah, that is so cool. Okay, so with, you know, psychic readings and and all that stuff, people automatically associate, you know, kind of in that same spiritual realm. They associate a lot of, a lot of astrology with it. So do you ever use astrology in your practice also, like in conjunction with, you know, everything that you're doing as a psychic and medium? And like, how do you like, you know, combine the two? A hundred percent. I believe in astrology. I believe so much of what we do is written in the stars. Mm -hmm. um, I believe um, in astrology and I incorporate it in my reading as well. I believe a lot of who we are um, and the day that we are born and the day that we are brought in the world is so symbolic to who we are. Mm -hmm. So I 100% believe in astrology. I feel like it's totally so accurate to me as a Virgo, everything mm -hmm. about me, the good and the bad, you know, um, uh, I, I, I like to take it with a grain of salt when it comes to relationships, because there are so, so often I'll see, you know, it says, oh, well, you know, a Virgo doesn't do great with, you know, uh, a static secretarius or whatever, but I've seen so many where it does, you know what I mean? So it's not like you can't, you know, live your life by it, but I do feel that it helps and you have to take it with a grain of salt, but I do feel it's so, so true and so accurate. And I think that it really helps. Now, kind of into, you know, misconceptions and stuff, because, you know, there's obviously a lot of information that floats around about psychics and mediums and, you know, if, you know, they're real or not or this and that. So what is like the most some one or some of the most common misconceptions that you think, you know, people and the Internet talk about, you know, with being a psychic? And yes, I love this question because I like to, you know, clarify, you know, it gives me a, a chance to open up on, you know, bring some light to the situation. I think a common mis misconception is that we are mind readers. You know, I get so many people that come in or that will call and be like, OK, so what am I thinking right now? Mm, not a mind reader. It doesn't work that way. And another thing is, is sometimes there is a difference you know, between getting a psychic reading, a tarot card reading, or a medium reading. Just because you're a psychic doesn't mean that you're a medium. Yeah. You know, um, a psychic is one that could tap into you, your energy, what's going on. A medium is one that can connect with spirits who've passed on. The two are very different. Now, often you can do both, but some can only do one or the other. And also, you can be a tarot card reader and not be a psychic or a medium at all. Anybody can learn to do a tarot card reading, you know, but having your reading done by someone who is a psychic, by somebody who is, you know, intuitive, by someone who can get their own feelings. Well, that's a much more different experience, you know, because for me, I use tarot cards. I love tarot, you know, um, but I don't need them to read you. You know, I use them as guidelines. Um, sure. But it's I could read you as you stand. You know what I mean? Just in the right. You know, I don't need to. I, I like tools that helps me, you know, but and it gives guidelines, but you don't. But so I think a common misconception is, is all these, you know, different stamps and labels as if they're all one. They're all different. So, yeah. So the next question, which is literally the, you know, the follow up to, you know, the misconceptions of psychics and mediums and all that stuff. How do you find a reputable, you know, psychic and medium and make sure that you're not, you know, like, what are the, like the telltale signs that a psychic might be like a phony? And actually, you know what? I do want your take on something, too. I had a friend that went to like, I told her she shouldn't have gone, but she went to like this really weird psychic and she paid her like a lot of money in New York and she shows up and the psychic told her that, what was it? She, the psychic told her something like, um, like she had like black, like a black magic spell on her or something. And then was like, you have to leave. <laughs> like It was something along those lines. I was like, I don't know about that. That was a little like aggressive. It's giving scam. Yeah. One of uh, you. I'll tell you. Which yeah. Friend it is. Wow. Yeah. I just kind of want yeah. on that specifically, Crazy. too, because I was like, that just seemed a little like she like paid like you know, whatever X amount of money for a reading goes in. The woman's like, oh, my God, you have this black magic spell on you. You need to be cleansed. Leave. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Like, I would have been like, oh, oh no. <laughs> no, that's. Take it I, away, unfortunately, you know? yeah, I hear things like that, you know, all the time. But that, that's definitely, you know, a no, no. And that's a red flag. I mean, I think that to find something genuine, the best advice I can give is do, you know, your research. 
you know, um, just like anything, you know, look at their, you know, reviews, do your research. Um, and obviously not just like going to a restaurant or, you know, um, getting your hair done. Not all of the reviews are going to be fabulous and good. You know, there's going to be one, two or several, but at least, you know, it's real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and another thing is you should never feel pressured. You should never feel pressured to get a reading. You should never feel pressured to, you know, move forward with, you know, your healing process or anything, you know, it's to, to get a genuine, you know, experience, you have to be led, you know, into the divine power of, you know, healing and psychic awareness or finding your one true self. It should never be forced, you know, and don't get me wrong. I cannot read for myself, just so you know. I cannot read for myself. I cannot read for anyone, even in my family. I always say it's God's way of having a sense of humor because, you know, maybe in some ways we're not supposed to know every single, you know, yeah. thing that goes on, you know, in my life or my loved one's life, you know, but, um, so when I want to, if I'm going through something and I want to get a reading, I have to do my research, you know, but being, you know, a psychic, I also know who has, you know, good, you know, feedback or reviews and stuff like that. And I also am a firm, firm believer of good old fashioned word of mouth, you know, yeah, when I'm somebody, saying. yeah, when somebody, you know, has like when my friend or somebody I know says, you know, I went and I had such a great experience and they were able to pick up on this. It's like, I know personally somebody that's gone and they were happy and they had a genuine you know, experience. So for me, it's good old fashioned word of mouth, do your research. But I've been I've been led to those places too, that I would just be like walking by and, you know, I would go in and sometimes I've had like, like a wow experience. And sometimes I've had experience, you know, experience where they just could not, you know, connect. So it's really all about being at the right place, being at the right time and, you know, word of mouth and doing, you know, your research. I know that sounds like a lot, but, you know, and definitely how to tell the real uh, from the fake is never, you should never feel pressured. You should never feel, you know, uh, forced or anything like that. I mean, I do believe in, you know, uh, sage and cleansings and working with crystals and manifesting. So I'll obviously, you know, I also recommend that in all of my, you know, um, healing, you know, practices or something that I feel like someone's going through, you know, something or break up and they kind of just want to release that energy, you know, or cut some cords. You know, I definitely believe in that. But, you know, I don't feel that it should be forced. And I think that the way that your friend, her reading and her experience tell her not to let one bad experience stop her from what could be a very good experience. And I hate it when people go through something like that, because then it kind of like makes them feel hesitant. And, you know, close their, their yeah. minds to other good experiences that are out there. But unfortunately, you have your good and your bad in everything, you know. Going back for a sec, because you said, obviously, you can't read yourself or your family. So is it that you can't read your family because it's like morally wrong or like you lit like you actually cannot pick up on, you know, their energy and stuff like your mind or your, you know, abilities won't let you? I actually can't pick up a single thing like yes. um it's just as much as a surprise like if the kids are telling me oh, i've got a new girlfriend or i didn't pass my time you know what i mean i can't pick up anything even if i want trust me there's been so many times i wish i could right. and i you know want to but i can't matter of fact like you know with my husband how i always you know knew i was intrigued this is when i was you know young and we first met i was so like I could not believe how I couldn't pick up one single thing about this guy, you know, oh. like I can't pick up on his energy. I can't feel if he's like, you know, uh, you know, a good person, like, no, like why can't I pick up anything? And I even still to this day, you know, we say one of the first things you ever, cause I went up to him and one of the first things I ever said was, I find it really, really strange. I can't pick up any vibe off of you. He's like, what do you mean? And I was like, I could always pick up a vibe on something or someone and it just went from there. I was so it, it was because, you know, we was meant and I, still to this day, I can't pick up or read anything oh, about him. Wait, so, OK, so when you met your husband, did you tell him right off the bat that you were a psychic? And like, yeah, he like was he like, that's cool or what? Or was he like, that's weird? Like, because I, feel like <laughs> I, feel like, I think all of the above. Like, 
Yeah, I think if I went on a date with a guy and he was, I was like, what do you do for a living? (laughs) I'm a psychic. I'd be like, what? Yeah. (laughs) I think it's all of the above. I think that he was probably a little freaked out. I also think that he thought, you know, oh, that's really cool. I think that he also was, it's probably a a mixed, you know, emotions he always said, but most of all he thought, and as he, most of all he thought it was probably more like cool and interesting, but as he got to know me and he started sometimes, you know, experiencing, you know, like the difference it makes in people's lives or, you know, that I really, you know, can pick up on things. He started like really supporting it. And I always said that, this is a big part of who I am. And like I said, I've always watched my mother, you know, where it took so much of her, you know, time that I knew that if I wanted to have a family or a life of my own, I had to have a partner that really knew that this is my life. It's not like just my job or an occupation, you know, this is who I am. Yeah. And that it comes, it's like such a big part of me and it comes, you know, first so much, you know, my people, my practice, it really is like my life, my calling. So I, I always wanted, I always knew that my chosen partner would have to be very comfortable with what I do and who I am. Yeah. And he was. Yeah. Also, you yeah. said before, I'm like, because now more questions are coming to mind. So you're saying, obviously, like if, you know, you uh, you know, your son or like whoever gets like a significant other and, you know, you can't necessarily read them. Can you read your kids significant other or yes you can. that actually i could yes ah, so have you picked that just before <laughs> like if they're yeah. like a terrible person you're like uh <laughs> yeah and that was the first time i said because for my my kids i couldn't really pick up much i mean i have that mother intuition when you know little like things when you see they know that they're not feeling well or things like that but nothing that's you know yeah. Like my ability or, you know, above and beyond. No. Um, but I started getting, you know, interested, you know, again, because when they, I, when they started dating, which is just recently, you know, more now the last few years, finally I was starting, you know, to pick up something at least on their girlfriend or I could tap into, you know, if it's a group person. I remember one time, like my son started dating somebody when he was like, 16 and I was like oh no this is like not a good idea I just pick up all kind of you know of course and it didn't go very well but uh <laughs> yeah so I could always pick up you know on their on their just my kids and my husband I can't pick up on anything on like when I'm really really close but so far so good I'm able to pick up on yeah. on on their love lives a little <laughs> it's like taking like mother's intuition to like a whole new level yeah. you know yeah Definitely. That's probably why they don't tell me very much. They like, yeah. want, you know what I mean? But then when they're going through something, they really come to me and really want my input when it's really, really like necessary. That is so interesting. Oh my so gosh. Cool. I, I mm-hmm. If I was like dating a guy and my mom was a psychic and came to me and was like, yeah, he's going to be broke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, wow. Like, gotta you know, go. like yeah. Okay. So yeah. speaking of, you know, like, these stories and stuff. Do you have any specific stories or, you know, of like crazy readings you've done or anything super interesting? Anything or that anything, sticks out. Yeah, yeah. Anything that sticks out to you. Do you have any like good stories? There's quite a bit of, there's a lot. Um, let me see. But I mean, one that really stuck out kind of recently is I have this sweet little old lady that used to come in that still comes in. Um, and she would travel quite a bit of ways, um, like an hour. And it was like, she's just one of my, you know, uh, existing, you know, clients has, you know, been with me for years. And, um, and she's just sticks with it. Like she's always on time, like every like six weeks, you know, she's just, and so she likes to keep up with things. And, um, I remember we were just reading into things and it was a pretty basic reading. And, um, she was just like, I'm not going to, go for this little test that my, you know, husband is doing. He seems everything is fine. And I'm just going to put it off until after our, you know, vacation, which is, you know, a couple months down the road. And I just had a feeling and I was just like, no, 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 I don't feel like you should put that off. If this, you know, test is, you know, now do what you got to do, make it to, you know, the do that ultrasound. I'm feeling like there's something that definitely, you know, needs attention. And I don't feel like it should be, you know, delayed. And I, you know, of course, but I won't go into all the details, but I went into, you know, the details with her. And so I just remember the feeling. It kind of like takes me back to that feeling like when I was, you know, young, because I still have those moments. And it, it, it's like, 
so satisfying. And I just feel so happy whenever this happens, like on these, you know, big level. Um, and I remember her calling me, you know, a week later and she was saying, I just had to call you and I had to tell you because, you know, I was going to put it off and something came up in one of his test results and he had to do like, you know, an emergency surgery. And I just, and even my husband was like, you have to call her. And he's the one now that makes sure she keeps up with all of her readings at the exact time. And it's like, he's always asking through her, like, should we do this? Should we do that? And I just remember having such a, you know, a big change. It was like really, really life changing, you know? And I was just like, wow, that was like really amazing. And then another story that really stuck out is that um, I'm a medical intuitive. I believe in all natural, like healing herbs. And I believe that, you know, that there is something natural on this earth that can heal, you know, us from within, uh, from our skin. From So I, I believe a lot in like natural healing. Um, and I help a lot of women with, you know, balance their hormones and, you know, fertility. So I was working with one client and um, was going through, you know, a fertility, you know, journey and just the overall, you know, healing and wellness, um, you know, transformation. And um, I kept seeing things happening, you know, in threes. And it, like this three was like such a significant number. And some of the things weren't really like adding up. And, um, you know, I kept, you know, trying to guide her to, you know, maybe it was, you know, three appointments or three you know three procedures or whatnot. And um, finally, everything came together and she wound up having triplets. Oh, my God. But it was like such a rare, oh my like, God. unpredictable thing because she was having, you know, problems. And um, she, this was before she didn't want to do all the like in vitro and all the like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he's trying to do things natural. So it was like such a rare, it had oh, no wow. idea. And I was like, this and. Yeah, she always sends me pictures still to this day, and the babies turned two years old just last month. Wow. And they're all beautiful, healthy babies, and I kept seeing the three, and I was just like, there you go. It was written in the stars. It was always meant for you to have these triplets. And, and so I, rare really too. I haven't heard of anybody having triplets naturally. Th- it's that's really a long very long time. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's really, it was really rare. And um, also, she's not, you know, young. And it was like a really rare thing. You know what I mean? So I was like, and it came up and it kept coming up and it kept coming up. And I was just like, it was like a really amazing moment. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, that is incredible. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's like all the questions we have, you know, the hard hitters. So we'll just get into the readings, basically, I think, right? Yeah. So (laughs) yeah. has never had a psychic reading done before. Yeah. She had a wow. Reading one time though. Yeah, I did do a medium even- reading like um about two years ago now. Um, I my family did it with this lady from upstate New York, and then I was on a wait list for like two or three years to see her, and I finally did, and it was completely life changing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I struggled with grief for a long time. Um, so it was just like so life changing for me and incredible, but I've never talked good. to a chick and I've always wanted to. So I'm yeah. really excited. All right, good. Well, I'm so excited yeah. for you. So basically, I mean, whenever you want to conduct it, the yeah. floor is yours. So- okay. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, first of all, Lily, I love your energy. And I mean, instantly, as soon as your, you know, energy came up on the screen, I just got this total like goddess vibration from you you know you have great uh you have a great sense of leadershipness but in the sense where you have no problem you know laying back and letting people present to you what they can you know offer you or how they can enhance your life you know what i mean so you have this real like goddess energy and vibe about yourself um there's also something that's very spiritual about your energy as well i feel like you're more like wise beyond your age and beyond you know your number um i also feel like you're somebody who's very genuine you know i don't feel like you're the type of person that you know if you don't like something or you're not you don't like someone you are not afraid to kind of sit back speak your mind and move on to the next you know i do feel that the last year has been challenging for you in the sense of more self-worth you know i feel like you've really been questioning more like 
you know, your self-worth and you for this whole within this last year, you've really been more on a better path or a better journey as far as healing. I feel like you went through something that really tested your strength as a woman and as a person. And it's more on a personal level, like through love and relationships. And I just feel like a sudden blow to the heart or to the chest. And what that means is like something happened that was um, very kind of all of a sudden and it hurt you and it disappointed you. And it took a lot for you to kind of pick up these pieces. You know what I mean? Um, but it taught you strength that you never knew you. Yeah, for sure. Very accurate. Uh-huh. <laughs> and now with this newfound strength, you're more selective on, you know, who you open up to, who you love, who you trust, who you connect with, you know what I mean? So I feel like you have this great sense of ability to connect when it comes to people and friends and, you know, with work and business and career. But when it comes to your emotions and the way you connect with love, it's a little bit not as strong. So right now you're leveling up, especially through work and business and your inner circle with friends. Do you understand? But it's not exact. And I don't take it the wrong way because it's not a bad thing. It's actually a very good thing. It's not exactly your time. The stars are not fully aligned for you that are just focusing just on love because there's so much bigger plans for you right now in the rest of this year with work and business and basically the connections that you're making with friends and stuff like that. Do you understand? Yeah. But have no need to fear because I feel like Mr. Right is by your side. Somehow or another, I feel like he's in your circle. Do I feel like you are at that place of like high potential, like where you need to be? No, because you're slowly going to get there. But I feel like there is a significant divine masculine energy that's around you that makes me feel like he is definitely, you know, there in your circle, but you haven't got to your potential highest point yet. There's some guardedness, there's some delays, there's some fear, you know what I mean? And once you're able to work past that, I feel like, you know, you are definitely going to reach a new level of connection and closeness. But it's more about, I guess, understanding each other, you know what I mean? And yourselves in the midst of it and getting rid of those blocks and those fears and those, that guard, because I feel like you've been very hurt in, in, in the past and actually not that long ago. So you're in the midst of still healing and you still need a time to heal. So it's not the best, best time to be in a relationship, but nonetheless, he's in the circle. So you can't just, you know, yeah. Throw them out the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you kind of got to. So is this resonating with you or not? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm with my partner now, but we're yeah. definitely like we're in a much better place than a few months ago. But we still have like a long road ahead of us. He definitely does, especially for his like personal development. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very accurate. To, to mm-hmm. so, yeah. 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 No, I pick up good things. And the most important thing that's good that I pick up on is that there is a certain sense of eagerness and yeah. willingness yeah. to work on use uh, like yourselves as individuals and a togetherness is the relationship. It would be for me a major, major like, you know, red flag or concern because I'm always able to tap into if that person isn't interested or they're kind of set in their ways or this, there's no movement here. There is movement here. The effort. Okay. Are- The effort is here. The will is there. The drive is there. The, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's very, uh, connected. You are very in sync. Like, so what you want is very compatible to what he wants. However, I don't feel that he is as good as communicating as you are, you know, (laughs) but, (laughs) but I do feel that he's willing to work on that. And Uh, that's, that's good news. Oh my God, oh my you're God. preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. That is so and the career funny. thing's crazy. I like was unemployed for the past year, like really struggling the past year with career stuff. And I just got a new job like two weeks ago. That's like awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, 
I feel good things with the new job. I feel that around the fall, they're going to, you know, bring up to surface some new changes um, that you're going to have to be like really, really focused. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's not going to happen to the fall. But I feel like whatever they're presenting is something that you're going to be like really eager to, you know, embrace. Uh And it's actually will be a good opportunity for you to, it's kind of like climbing, climbing a ladder is the feeling and the vibration that I'm picking up on. And so it's going to be like taking steps going up. Cool. So in the fall, they're going to present to you some type of step, you know, uh, up, but you have to, um, you know, embrace it. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. like working on my motivation and like, because I was not working for so long that like, I do feel like I'm needing to work like a lot harder than I have been the past few weeks. So mm-hmm. it all checks out. That makes sense. You <laughs> might want to work with um, some tiger's eye crystal. Oh or... my God. My boyfriend gave me one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, you God. might, you might want to real like I feel he gave you that for a reason. And sometimes the spirit works through our, you know, our loved ones or our partners. Yeah. But I don't feel that that was a coincidence. Oh, I feel no. like that was a sign. And I don't believe <laughs> I don't believe in coincidences. I only believe in signs. So the fact that he gave you that and then today that I'm recommending, it, you know, in a reading and I could feel that energy around you wasn't just as a, it's something you need. You know, yeah. you need the power and the energy that it promotes because not only does it have some really powerful ancient like protective um, qualities, but it's great for focus and to like activate your ability to feel motivated. There's a there is some blockages that's coming around the third eye chakra, and that's our ability and our perception to receive and to focus. And that's where all of our creativity comes from and all of our ideas and our motivation. So it will definitely help release any blockages from the third eye chakra. So how are you working with it? Are you wearing it? Are you keeping it close to you? Are you meditating with it? I He gave me it like a one. I just put it on my shelf next to my bed, but I am struggling a lot with fo- focusing right now. Like I've just been noticing that it works. So maybe I should. <clears throat> it like- no, no, no. Do not keep it on the shelf. You know, okay. that's good. If you just want to clear your space, you okay. need more than that. That's not what this is used for. What you need to start doing is start wearing and working with that energy. Hold okay. it close to you. Put it close to you at nighttime. If you could just hold it close and meditate and actually start visualizing the art and the beauty of manifesting is believing and seeing something is happening. And then it is unfolding right before your eyes as if it's already here, as if you already achieved it. So you need to really allow that energy to sink in. And to do that is by really embracing its ancient property values. So start holding it close to you, meditate with it, really start seeing yourself, you know, opening up and being able to focus the way you used to, if not better. Wow. Okay, done. (laughs) (laughs) More. Amazing. And that's why I'm so happy to be like, you know, on this platform, because there's so many, like, you know, people that, you know, have, they don't know how to, you know, they, they could feel it, but there's so many ways you could really cultivate, you know, all these beautiful forms and ways to manifest and use this energy. Like, like to, like just now where your boyfriend gave you this tiger's eye and how I'm feeling it. That's not a coincidence. That's a sign from your spirit guides, from your angels trying to tell you, look, this is going to help you. You know what I mean? Wow. And I just, I love being that messenger in between to put everything all together. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. That's so mm-hmm. cool. I see the heart. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I get it now. Get it now. That's yeah. Awesome. Well, so thanks. I'm all about, you know, um, like really healing within the mind, the body and the spirit. Mm-hmm. And I'm all about total wellness within the mind, body and spirit. And I, um, for the rest of the year, I'm going to be working on doing these, you know, retreats for people that want to kind of enter the spiritual world and also do a little relaxation and also 
you know, they can work with me and, you know, do meditations and just really start opening up their spiritual realm to reach their higher self or even just to release something from the past that's holding them back. So I want, you know, everyone, if they can, if they want, are interested to follow me on Instagram, um, you'll see, like, I offer all these re- wellness retreats. Um, on my Instagram, I'm always putting up what type of crystal to work with, what works best with your sign, cool. uh, what to expect with Mercury retrogrades or whatever's going on in the universe. I really believe in um, working with the universe and the full moon and how to bring positive energy in your life. Um, so, yeah. So for anybody who's feeling a little lost and they want to just be more open minded and spiritual, get involved, get in touch. I'm here to help. Yeah. We'll put like your socials and everything. Oh, in the yeah. Bio. Yeah. People will definitely. Be yeah. Able. I'll be following. Do you have any questions conference. about your reading? I don't think so. You were very clear. Like I, I was going to ask to touch on relationships and career and, and you did. So that was- Don't worry. It comes right up. Like I said, yeah. I have no control. <laughs> I have no control over it. It's just whatever your spirit and your energy wants to come through without you even having to ask, you know, it's just going to come through. Oh, and that's another thing I want to mention. Um, going back to one of your questions you had, you're like, how do you tell, you know, the real from the fake? If you get a reading, And instantly that reader is asking you questions. That's a no, no, you know, um, they shouldn't be instantly or right away asking questions. And what do you No, It should just be going, you know, into what they feel. A lot of times people will come in and get a reading and they want to talk about their life or their problem. You know what I say? No, don't tell me anything. I'll tell you. And then we go from there. Now, surely at the end of the reading, I have no problem. And I'll say, what are your questions? Just so I make sure everything is, you know, answered, but it should not be. That's, that's, that's a red flag. No, you know, reading you get should go into or should start with questions. Yeah. I I actually have one. So I know, um, obviously that was more of like the psychic reading. If you had a client, me or anyone, and they wanted to tap into more of like a medium reading with you, are you able to do that? Or is it only if it happens like naturally for you? I am able to do specific, you know, specific just mediumship readings, but I always tell my clients it's not something I have control over, you know, so come in with an open mind and an open heart. And if the spirits are earthbound and they want to come through, then I will. And we're going to, you know, try to focus on just that, you know, but if not, then, you know, it's not, you know what I mean? So we, I have no control over it, but I do do readings that are just to focus on that. But I always also try and tell them it's not a guarantee that the spirit will come through. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right, cool. I mean, I guess cool. it, me. Yeah. I actually got a reading from you not that long ago. So I don't know what would be too different if you're tapping into mm-hmm. that. I was hearing it on the internet. Christina. Yeah. <laughs> That's- but, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see what I can pick up for you. Um, the first thing that I'm picking up, like that shoots out at me, and I always go by, you know, the, you know, that first feeling is there is a lot of green in your aura. Right of what? There. Green, the color green. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> green means, first of all, um, strength, prosperity. Mm-hmm. Um, it means that there might have been some delays that you've been feeling, you know, on maybe your money flow or um, just some things that you might have been waiting for and that there's some, the universe is working in your favor and there's some breakthroughs that are happening for you more on a financial level. That's And (laughs) (laughs) yeah, so you might have been feeling like a little behind or you might have been feeling like a little, you know, set back, but there's definitely, you know, breakthroughs. Um, And also that you are in a major midst of, you know, healing. And that you are surprised even with your own self because you're doing, you know, a lot better than what you think, you know, and there is moments or there are sides of you that, you know, not many people know, but you are, you know, a very open person, but that you do, you know, second guess yourself or but not as much as, you know, before. So you're definitely much stronger now than you ever have been before. Yeah, true. That yeah, that would definitely align too. And it's weird that both on both fronts too, because this year I definitely made like 
I did like a lot of reflection and like kind of pivoting and stuff. So the money flow stuff makes sense because this hasn't been my most financially rich year, I suppose. Um, Mm -hmm. But then also with the healing and whatnot, too, I have felt this really strong sense as of lately to really focus on myself and like my own healing journey. So that that all aligns. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling so. And a green means a green uh, also means a great sense of independence. Mm. There is this new found independence within you. Like there's this, this roar, this lion, almost fierce energy that I'm picking up in you. Like I don't need to be held back. I don't need anything that's going to hold me down. I don't need to be delayed. I'm, you know, moving forward. You know what I mean? With no fear and no like second guessing. So there's, embrace this energy that's around you because let me tell you this type of fierce energy is where the magic is this is what this is what moves mountains this is where what makes things happen there is a lot of travel around you and there is a lot of breakthrough energy that i am loving around you so embrace it okay great wow that's yeah. Sounds sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> accurate though to what you're yeah. going through. Yeah, very accurate to what I'm going through. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like mm-hmm. I'm shivered up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But over the time. But it is <laughs> always so good to get a reading because sometimes getting a reading is like things we already know. Yeah. But it's like having a stranger validated. Yes. It mm-hmm. just puts things in such a perspective. And also it's things that we don't know, but we'll see it come to life. And that's how, you know, you got like a really good reading is not only having, cause I, having a stranger read you and just not know anything about your life and then have it validated. It's, you just feel like, okay, I'm on the right path or, Oh, this is meant, you know, supposed to happen. You know what I mean? And then even the things you don't know that's going to, it's, it just feels so aligned, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense. So question obviously my reading is definitely more like career and like self-focus which would make a lot of sense because I honestly haven't really been focused on yeah well I was gonna say this is gin and toxic so is there anything that comes up in the love realm or you know any of that stuff at least for me at all there's a lot lot of chaotic energy (laughs) in your love (laughs) I just feel like there's there's a lingering past energy that's going to come in and out and I also feel when I say chaotic is because I'm feeling a few little like you know stragglers in there as well and then one significant one as well okay so that's why I call it chaotic is because I'm picking up a couple of different you know things there's this past that needs to you know what I mean have a little bit more understanding and closure um then there's like uh some other like little stragglers but then there's one significant one that will just can't be overlooked and I just feel like there's a little stick in a stake quality that that one has stick in a stick what sorry I'm like so bad at like those things when you <laughs> like that he just sticks around or they just kind of like there. Hmm. Yeah. In a good way. In a good way, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big G's. <Yeah. laughs> nicknames for every boy yeah, we on nicknames the show. for guys that we talk about on the show. One of the yeah. Jeans, I have a feeling that might be him. He but... seems to be sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be the sticker. I just feel like whatever you throw at him, he's going to be like dodging it and like take it. And so true. he's going to go along with it. Does that, that no, sound like someone not- you know? Very. Yes. That sounds exactly. That's he so is very crazy. like, go with it. Like, you know, whatever sort of energy. So that would make yes. a lot of sense. And- there will even come a time that you'll be like, I want to sabotage this. I am done. And he'll be like, oh, no, that's not happening. Just- <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds like, that just sounds like he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. he has just this sticking quality that, I, you know, I like. Yeah. That's so funny. And then also mm-hmm. the past coming like in and out and kind of lingering and stuff. That would make sense. Um, yeah. actually, in our last reading that we did, I told you about that like whole thing that I went through with my ex. That and- has to be done. You got to be out with the old, on with the new. Oh. I feel like that was meant to come in when it did. And now that chapter is meant to close. I think a lot of times, you know, people come into our life for a season or a lesson 
or, you know, they're meant to come in for a reason, but it, it doesn't mean that that is your, you know, lifelong partner or that this is the one. They might be the one at that time that's meant to come in to teach us something, to show us something, but chapter closed. Oh, 100%. Oh, uh, closed, trust me. You're, yeah, you don't got to worry about that. <laughs> Reopen. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. When a chapter closed, what we don't understand is when we invite someone into our lives and we share, you know, a relationship or we share a moment or our bed with that person and we're intimate with that person, we're exchanging energies. Okay. We might say, oh, it's just casual or it's, a, or it's not, but we're still exchanging energy. Okay. And their energy becomes your energy at some point, depending on how much, you know, you're letting yourself, you know, open up to them and vice versa. But when we choose to close that chapter, close that chapter. Yeah. There's no need, you know, to really, if especially if it was, you know, said and done and it kind of hurt you and there's nothing, you know, no good things attached anymore. There's no need to, you know, stay uh, communication or, or friends. Release that energy. Do a sage, you know, cleansing. You know, burn <laughs> that sage in your place, in your apartment. Get rid of, you know, the things that, you know, belong and really start new and fresh and let in that, you know, that new energy and, and, and embrace it. Oh, yeah. I when he like moved out, I got rid of like all my bedding. I saged my whole apartment like I just yeah. like, whole thing to like get rid of his energy. And it's very interesting, too, that you say that your things and item hold energy. energy. Items hold energies. I'm sorry to cut you off. Things hold energy. And, you know, people don't realize that. And you have to release that. It's like, like I said, off with the old and on with the new. Yeah, absolutely. What I was going to say was it's so interesting that you said the energies become one because I do feel like and Lily has definitely seen it the past like six months that I was dating him, you know, from like January until we broke up. My energy was just so low and lazy and like definitely was not at my best. And then when I got him out of like my energy field, like out of my apartment, I felt like the instant like the clearing and like the shift and like getting back to me again. So it's and that could be why your aura has changed to yeah. green because green means prosperity, leveling up, uh, finding your like independence. I don't that fierce energy. I don't need anybody. I'm going to do me kind of thing. You know what I mean? But I always tell my clients like be careful who you let in, you know, be careful who you share, you know, your bed with, who you, you know, let into your life there. It is real. Exchanging energies is real. You can absorb someone's trauma, someone's sadness, someone's energy, some, all of that. And it can drain you. Okay. So one more quick, like question, question dash point with the reading is there anything are you able to pick up on any, you know, give a reading or any energies uh, based on friendships like between me oh, and yeah. Lily right now, even if it's bad and you're like, you guys are going to have a huge falling out tomorrow. <laughs> like The you know, only thing, the only thing uh, bad that I could pick up about your guys's connection, and I don't think it's bad at all, is that you guys have almost this like oath of like, um you be honest with me. I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to say it like it is. I'm going to say it like it. You know what I mean? You totally. guys have yeah. like this total understanding. Even if it hurts me, I'm going to be like, I'm going to tell you the truth. This dress looks bad on you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like what that type of understand. But I, the main energy that I pick up from you both is that balance. You have this dual kind of yin yang. It's not like yous are the same. That's no. not it. A yin yang or balance means that what Lily doesn't have, you have. What Christine doesn't have, Lily has. Do you understand? And you somehow you have this great sense of balance, you know. And um, I think that sometimes when one of you is kind of you know dreaming and you know something's unrealistic, there's another one of you that can you know bring each other back to earth. You know what I mean? So. I feel like he's got a there's a great dynamic between the both of you. And I feel like um, it's 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 strong and you have just this great sense of balance. Sometimes you can butt heads, but only in the sense that you are brutally honest with each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would make a lot of that. She like <laughs> they, wait, they always make jokes about um 
like back in January when she met. <laughs> I, text, she met I, texted her, I sent her this long text. I was basically yeah. like, I hate your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to go. Like, mm-hmm. Longest text. I wasn't message. ready to hear it at the time. But oh, yeah. no. At the time, I wasn't ready for it. Now, obviously, I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, but we are yeah. very different people Definitely, that are yeah. very compatible based on our different. Yeah. And I can totally. Yeah. Thing of like what one lacks and the other makes up for, yes you know mm-hmm. but that would make a lot of sense nice. i have style yeah, I, I, <laughs> you're still wearing your brandy melville sweatpants yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's very true. all right yeah. I, yeah that was a good question yeah sure. no i, I like definitely that. you know mm-hmm. gotta tie it back to the friendship but i mean yeah that's basically it that that was great wow. though I'm, all I'm, of it yeah that's yeah awesome. so fun yeah i love it uh, i'm definitely gonna be booking like a a more a longer reading yeah like a more in <laughs> sure off yeah so yeah, I'll definitely pass the info along well all right so if anybody this is kind of your chance uh where can the people that are listening find you whatever you want to promote any last words take yeah it. so um my instagram is readings by Catherine. um my website is readings by Catherine. i'm based here in long island in bay shore I am working with a girl. Her Instagram is, um, you could, when you go through my Instagram, you'll see the link in my, um, bio. Her name is, uh, Stormy. I am Stormy. And she is, uh, who I'm collaborating with doing, um, all the retreats. We have a retreat that we're doing, um, this October in, uh, the Hamptons and it's a wellness retreat. So anybody that's interested to, you know, enter the spiritual world of meditation and yoga, Everything's all included. And I will also be doing some of my shaman, you know, healing uh, ceremonies, um, anything that wants to anybody that's interested in, you know, opening themselves up to becoming more spiritual. This is a great way to uh, something to experience, you know, and you're with other spiritual people. And it's just a great way to open up your spiritual journey. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, and you could get in touch with me through my website, or you know, give me a call, and um, we could always schedule you. I do all type of readings, and I could do readings over the phone, or you could come in, or we can do you know Zoom, and um, yeah, just reach out. Yeah, honestly, next time I'm in Long Island, I was just gonna say, yeah, we, yeah, I'm, I'm down just, for a Long Island. Trip. <laughs> yeah, I know, and because I've never, I've never met you in person. I'm obviously oh, from, no, I've never met her in person. I'm obviously from Long Island. I'm from Suffolk County. Mm-hmm. We take, yeah. Out. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta make the visit soon when we need. Yeah, her. definitely and in person, and we'll make a trip mm-hmm. out. Sure, I love it. Yeah. All right, girls. I thank love it. It was good talking to you. Yeah, thank thank you so on. much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it too. And thank you for letting me come on here and just getting out my story and, you know, hopefully reaching out to others who, you know, are curious about finding themselves or going through something and they just want a reading and want to know a little bit more. Yeah. Amazing. Thank, happy. You so thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah. All right. So that was fabulous. Catherine is incredible. You guys I told you guys it was gonna be a good the one. The crystal thing was fucking insane. Yeah, that I did a text at work bay after, and I was like, "Bitch, remember that tiger's eye you gave me like two days ago? What the fuck?" And yeah, new like, oh my god, that was so crazy. No, literally, the whole <laughs> thing was crazy. But uh, now we are going to get into gin and tips. So uh, we have one here, and I actually haven't. I like didn't fully read through this in a minute, so we're gonna read through it. We got a DM from this girly. All right. She says, I just got broken up with by my partner because he claims I wasn't affectionate enough. Oh, shit. Yeah. We both have different love languages and quality time is mine and physical touch is his. Personally, I don't need as much affection as he does and get overwhelmed easily, to which he says his love shouldn't overwhelm me. He's tried giving me more space in hopes that I become more affectionate with him. And I've tried getting him to understand my perspective. But it seems as if he wants to. Oh, it seems as if he doesn't want to understand. He. Wait, this fucked up. Sorry. I think she like fucked up. the message. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I think it's that like uh, he won't understand how he feels. Whatever. Anyways, moving on. 
It's not like I'm never affectionate with him. I like to hold hands and cuddle and share a kiss here and there in public, but more in private. But that doesn't seem to be enough for him. And neither does anything else I can offer to our relationship because I lack the one aspect he wants. We've been together for six months and haven't had any major issues up to this point and never argue. Along with that, I thought he was the one. Am I in the wrong here? Part of me really wants to try and be more affectionate with him and make things work. But if he wants to try, if he wants to try again. But I'm also a setback because he broke up with me so abruptly because of one thing he wasn't happy about. We were talking about moving in together and getting engaged. So I'm very confused about the complete 360 he pulled, hoping that it was just a stupid reaction without really thinking. Okay, so the whole thing. So synopsis. Her boyfriend broke up with her because they have different love languages. And what was it? Hers is that she's not really that affectionate. um, And he really likes a lot of physical touch. Her love language is just quality time. And so the boyfriend broke up with her because he felt he wasn't getting enough affection. And she says like other things like they, you know, they didn't have any problems like otherwise, like they've had a great six months. But I, I do feel like at least from my past experiences, this is something where the relationship can be great. But that is always going to be something that will catch up to you. Yeah. Because in certain ways, like people can change, but you are who you are in certain ways. And I feel like the way you give and receive love, at least for me, it's been pretty consistent since I was like a kid. Yeah. Like I am give and receive love in a very particular way. And that's kind of like a core thing about me. And my previous partner wasn't very affectionate and I struggled with that. But, you know, for the first few years, I was like, oh, whatever, whatever. But then after yeah. a few years, like you deserve to receive the love that you yeah in want. the way that you want yeah 100 percent, and that's like a big thing because here's the thing i do think that love languages can be learned like yes. you know if you're in with a partner ways, yeah. and you know in this instance like obviously you know his love language is more physical touch do i think that you know the girl that submitted this do i think that she could you know eventually if she wanted to try you know to do more things if you love your partner enough <clears throat> you'll try to align the love languages you'll cater more to their love language and they'll try to cater more to yours um i i do think maybe him breaking up with her i think that's like a little aggressive soon and a little abrupt yeah like only six six months isn't a long time yeah i mean i don't know unless he knows in his gut like to our core we are two very different people um Cause like I kind of wish I had recognized that sooner in my last relationship, but like whatever. But like it did take me like three years to realize, oh, I probably should be with someone that's more cuddly because I'm the most cuddly person ever. Yeah. Like, when am I doing dating someone that isn't affectionate at all? So like, you know, if they can I, work on it, you know. Also, I kind of feel like I'm not gonna lie. I feel like there's gotta be out. something. What? It seems like a cop out too. It, yeah, it seems like there might be something else underlying. Because she was just saying be like that he he doesn't think that you guys are yeah and is using man. that as, it could just be that like yeah like because she said they were talking about moving in together and getting engaged and there was like nothing else and i feel like like yes like obviously your love language is like a big deal but i feel like you know for the right person mm-hmm. especially which she she's saying she goes i thought he was the one we we're talking about moving in and getting engaged and all profile? that stuff <laughs> oh it's oh, a, a screenshot. screenshot yeah but it's just like I don't know. I feel like, like I said, love languages can be learned. And I mean, for this girl, she's saying too, like, you know, part of me really wants to be more affectionate and make things work if he wants to try again. But she's also set back because he broke up with her abruptly because of yeah, one thing burns. he wasn't happy about. Yeah. And the feeling so that of someone like, like giving up yeah, abruptly sucks. Yeah. And it needs to see too, like, have they like... You know, it seems like they probably have had a conversation about it. But like, have you guys actively worked together to, you know, cater to each other's love languages? Is this a, you know, thing that's lingering? Like, you know, and um, as in terms of like, you know, part of you wants to be with him again and, you know, try and be more affectionate. And then one part of you is like, he broke up with me abruptly, though, over something like this. You know, is him breaking up with you? Like, is that like, you know, like ruining things over one little thing? Is that like a pattern? Is that something that could be learned? Yeah. Is your communication good otherwise? You know, if you have like a history of like good communication, then maybe it's just, you know, a thing of communication and setting some boundaries of like, 
you know, you want to be more physically affectionate and whatnot, but maybe you have like a slight boundary with like one thing, but you could adjust, you know, maybe give them a few more kisses in public. Yeah. I don't know. You know, so this is kind of a hard one, but I think overall, like if you, in terms of if, you know, speaking directly to this girl, you know, you wanting to be more affectionate and make it work with him and whatnot, you know, just try to think like, is this truly the only thing? Yeah, I was going to say, like, maybe it's time to do a little reflection and be like, yeah. are we compatible in every other way, though? Or were there more issues? Yeah. Does he maybe just not like love me in the way where like I'm the one for him and like that can hurt. But like at the same time, you don't want to be with someone that doesn't look at you like you're everything. to yeah. them. So if you don't feel like you're everything to them and if you don't feel like you're totally compatible, it sucks and it stings, but it's better to end it early. Yeah, and she has a point, obviously, where she's like, I also don't know, though, because he just ended it so abruptly over one little thing. Like, is that someone you want to be with for the no. long term? You guys have only... The thing... I hate six a months. Six <laughs> months is very fresh. Very like, if you're going to get out of something, get out of it now. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to be with the runner? It seems yeah. like this guy is probably a runner. One little thing That's goes wrong, and he's like, That's one of my least favorite traits in people with relationships like I hate when they leave this I had this problem with work pay I hate when something goes wrong and they just think okay relationship over it's like what yeah (laughs) like people go you know couples go to therapy or not therapy. you don't have to do that but like they work through things it's like part of a relationship I also feel like it's worth it I feel like the six month mark is usually like the point where like their true character starts to come out because mm-hmm. it's like not that the honeymoon phase dies down necessarily no, but, but it's like are you really, really in this learning yeah, yeah are you truly in this yeah um so yeah i mean overall advice is girl totally up reflection. to you if you want yeah you need to do some reflection is this truly the only thing also do you want to be with the runner and also remember if he made a mistake by leaving he'll come back and like yeah I will say, like, you know, it's easy to be like, never let him back. Like, you know, fuck him, whatever. Let him back that one time if you want to and never forget. (laughs) So if he does it again. If it is truly just this and there's no, like, infidelity or he's not being, like, a mean person. If it truly is just the love language issue, I feel like letting him back in and truly working through that to, like, come to, like, some sort of, like, happy medium with the yeah. love languages could 100% work. Yeah, and it could move I you guys. I don't think this is an end-all be-all. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of two things. It's going to be the end for you guys, or he's going to come back and you guys will be stronger than ever. So whatever ends up happening, just trust that that is what needs to happen. All right, Goodbye. guys. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Make sure to go follow us at Gin Toxic Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Make sure to DM us, you know, for gin and tips submit your uh you know what you need advice on or whatever um and yeah that's that's about it oh fuck sorry what? <laughs> I'm so sorry david doesn't have keys what does he oh, need to get in so and out or yes uh, guys, did he leave no i need him to do my laundry <laughs> anyway okay sorry all right <laughs> well sorry. clearly lily has shit to do okay. she's panicking We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just read that and I was like, fuck. Oh, so annoying.